Hello guys, welcome to my channel. I'm Daniel Vicario. I'm a physics professor for more than more than 13 years now. Okay, so today we're going to discuss about fluids. And in physics, it's very important. There is a branch of physics called fluid mechanics, which deals with the study of fluids either at rest or fluids in motion. So how these phenomena or substances behave? Like examples of fluids are water, right? The river, the oceans, our blood is a fluid, a swimming pool, or the wind is a fluid, air. The air that we breathe is a fluid, right? So let's define first what fluid is. Okay, let's define fluid. Fluids are substances that have the ability to flow. So it has the ability to flow, but it can also be at rest. Okay, so what are those uh, substances? Examples are, it can be gas and liquid. So these are fluids. When you say gas, so the molecules are far away from each other. Examples are air is a gas. We have, you know, when you, when you uh, make a balloon, you use a gas, not air, but it's usually helium gas. You can also use helium gas. It's a fluid. Water is a fluid, very common example. Another example would be honey. Honey is also a fluid. Although it's viscous, in, in Tagalog, malapot, viscous, it is, still has the ability to flow. It can flow. And of course, you have oil and other examples would be in our body, right? I've said earlier, blood. Our blood is a fluid and so on, etc. Now, there are two basic, uh, there are two main branches of fluid mechanics. And uh, these are, the first one is called the fluid statics. And the second one is fluid dynamics. So fluid statics deals with the study of fluids at rest. So stationary fluid. They're not moving. Examples are, if you are in a swimming pool, stationary, stationary water is not flowing. So it's just there. Okay. So those are examples. The, the, the fluid or the, the water in the swimming pool. And also, how about for fluid dynamics? So it deals with fluids in motion. So what are the fluids in motion? Wind is an example. Rivers, the, the water flowing on the, on the river. Okay, so we can find fluids in rivers. And uh, the wind is a very common example of, of fluid. Okay, now before we continue with the specifics of fluid statics and fluid dynamics, let us define first some terms that are used to study fluids. And these are density and uh, pressure. So let's start with density. Density, specifically mass density, is defined as the mass per unit volume. Okay, so I have here the mass and the capital V here is your volume. So the volume is the space occupied by your matter. The mass is the amount of matter, okay? So this is our formula. Let me box it. So this is the formula definition for, for density, specifically mass density. So what are the units of of density. There's a unit for density is you have mass and then you have volume. Mass, kilogram, volume. There is liter, there is ml or milliliter, there is cubic centimeter, but there's a unit is cubic meter. Okay? In, in our chemistry lab laboratory before, we're dealing with smaller quantities, so sometimes we use a gram per cc or gram per ml, gram per cubic centimeter. Sometimes you also use that, but as a unit is kilogram per cubic meter. 
So these are some of the examples of the density of material. So you have air, which is considered one of the, the less dense substance. You have water, it's denser than air. Obviously, you have 1,000 kilogram per cubic meter. You have wood. Okay, so wood is not as dense as water. It's less dense than water. So wood is mostly, there is air, you know, in the spaces of the wood. Another example would be concrete, which obviously is very, it's, it's denser than water. And you have gold. It's, gold is, if not, I think gold is the densest material known. So it's pretty much heavy in a small volume. Okay. So those are examples of uh, material and, and their densities. You can find the values for other substances in perhaps in the internet. Okay. So now let's de define pressure. Press. Okay. Pressure. So we define it as force per unit area. So pressure equals force per unit area. So this is your force and this is your area. Okay. So I will apply force in this contact area here. Take note, the pressure depends on the force and the area. So this one is a higher pressure than this one. Low pressure, although the, the force is the same, but the pressure here is higher than the pressure if I use a bigger area. So area is inversely proportional to pressure. Okay? So if I, if I apply, the pressure here is less. The pressure here is, ouch, high because the area is quite small than the area here. So pressure depends also on the area. Okay? So, but if you're talking about fluid, it's usually, let's say this is your balloon. Okay, it's usually, you have the pressure here, right? It's the perpendicular force exerted on that area here. So you have force there, perpendicular to the surface. You have the force here, perpendicular to this area. Okay, so that's the pressure. That's the pressure that we're talking about. And if you are, for example, if you're swimming or uh, we are in, 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 in an atmosphere. So let's say you're, you're here. The force per unit area or the pressure that we are experiencing in the fluid in our atmosphere, air, is always perpendicular to our area, to the surface of our body, okay? And that is what we call the atmospheric pressure. So we just call it PATM, atmospheric pressure, and that is you know, 1 ATM, 1 atmospheric pressure is about 10, 100, I think 100, 1,300 Pascal. Pascal is the SI unit of pressure. Okay? Or you can also write it in scientific notation. 1.1, no, no, no. 1.1013 1 times 10 to the 5 Pascal. Okay, so let's not forget, forget to write the SI unit. Newton per cubic meter or the SI unit is in honor of great uh, Blaise Pascal so we use Pascal okay so this is the formula for your oops pressure force per unit oops doesn't look nice force per unit eh no <laughs> I cannot write it properly. I hope only this works. Anyway, so you know what I mean or what I want to do. Okay, so we are surrounded by this pressure, right? So it's quite high. So 1 ATM is a huge number. Look at this. My goodness, that's 101,300 Newton per square per cubic meter. So that's a huge amount of of force per unit area of pressure but our body is used to it already okay so our body in a way applies the same amount of force to the to the to the surface or to to our skin you know to our every part of the body we grew up with this we grew up in planet earth and we, we grew up with with this amount of pressure surrounding our body okay if we are alien perhaps if if we go to 
to Mars, the, the pressure in Mars is very low. So perhaps we might disintegrate or well, we need to have a special suit, a pressurized special suit. If you go to the bottom of the ocean, the pressure is tremendously high. So, you know, so we use submarine or we use a special robotic suit so that we will not be crumpled by this huge amount of pressure under the ocean. Or in outer space, basically, there's no pressure. So we need to have a spacesuit. Or in, in Jupiter, the Jupiter, the pressure, if you go down to the, to the, the middle, the center of, the, of Jupiter, the pressure gets higher and higher. So you, you will be crushed. So we sent some spaceships there and it was crushed later on and goes closer to the center of the, the planet Jupiter. So I have here a box. So I have here a box. But it was not being crushed. Look at this. It's not being crushed. Okay. So we say that there's a pressure that is surrounding that that uh, this this box, the trap pack of uh, juice. That's our pressure. But there is air inside it. So in a, in a way, the pressure inside and out is the same. So it doesn't crumple because it has air inside okay but to demonstrate to you that the pressure outside is big enough to crush this look at this if i'm going to get rid of the air that applies that same amount of pressure as the pressure outside the pressure outside can crumple it so look So there's no pressure or very less pressure inside because there's no air. So it, the pressure outside can actually crumple. And you can also do this with metal, okay? <laughs> like perhaps I can crumple this, but no, I might, uh, <laughs> I cannot do it with the power. So that's how powerful the, the pressure surrounding our body. And uh, yeah, we're used to it. So it doesn't bother us anymore, okay? Okay. So how about if we go swimming under the sea? Sometimes you've experienced this, like your ear seems to be popping, like, ah, oh, it's annoying. Okay, I did some uh, snorkeling in Boracay a long time ago, and there is this uh, helmet diving where you walk on the bottom of the ocean of the sea, and it feels like I'm an astronaut. <laughs> so so it's really a nice experience, but it's it's really annoying to the ears because the pressure is high and you know the compressor uh, it's a pressurized way to give you oxygen or air. So it's a little bit annoying because of the pressure underneath the, the, the seafloor. It, it's, it's the pressure is high. Okay, so how is the the pressure or the, uh, how is that the depth of the water level affects the pressure okay so based on our observation it is high so let let's see you are swimming under the ocean so this is uh, your you are swimming here oops something like that okay <laughs> Forgive my, my drawing. Okay, so bubbles, 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 bubbles. And then you are at certain depth or at certain, let's just call it the height or the depth. I just call it H. The, the, the distance from the surface of the water of, the, of the, the, the sea. And let's say this is, we consider this box, arbitrary volume of water here. Okay. Okay, so let's say we're, con we're going to consider this um, arbitrary volume of water. It has some area. There's some area here. So there's pressure. Let's just call it uh, pressure one here. And then there's pressure, of course, on this side. We call it pressure two. And of course, there are also pressure at, at different directions at the sides. But we'll just consider the, the pressure above and below. And of course, this arbitrary uh, container has a weight. It has a weight. 
mg mass times acceleration due to gravity. But remember that uh, mass is related to density. From our definition of density, mass density is mass per unit per unit volume. So mass can be equated also to density times volume, right? So you can have other formula for mass, density times volume, capital B for volume, okay? So this has a volume, and the volume is, it's the sides times the, the area. So it's length or the, the thickness, or in this case the height, area times the height. But what we're considering are the, the along the, the vertical axis. So you have area there, area one, you have area two here, okay? And uh, we'll just, and you know that this, this is uh, a rectangular uh, uh, cavity or, or container. So the area one is actually equal to area two. So we'll just call it like that. So we'll just call it A, area one equals area, area equals area one equals area two. They're the same, okay? So let's just call it like that. And we know that pressure is force per unit area. So you have here force one over area one, uh, pressure two is force two over area two. Now. The question here, here is how is that the water depth affects the pressure? As you go down, what will happen to the pressure? So perhaps you can use the Newton's equation, Newton's laws. So we have a uh, summation of all the f, x, f, y along the y axis equal to zero. This is stationary or at rest. The fluid is at rest. It's not moving. So the forces involved here are, are the summation is zero. Okay. So, but there are a lot of forces. There is the force one, uh, okay, force two is upward. This is the, the force two here, upward. So force two, positive. The force one is downward, downward, so minus F1. And the weight is always downward, so negative W. And then, then equate that to zero. Okay, but based on this, you can cross multiply to get the equation for force so but here force is equal to pressure times acceleration uh, times area and of course weight is mg so you can substitute these values for f2 that is uh, p2 times a1 minus p p1 times oops this is a, a2 p1 times a1 minus mg Equate that to zero, but we know that A1, A2, they're the same. They're equal. Oops, there's something wrong. That that should be. Mm -hmm. Your weight now here is rho V G, right? So this should be rho V G. Okay, so but um wait. What are we going to do next? We know that V is AH, right? So substitute again. P2, A2, I'm writing here, minus P1, A1, minus rho. And we know that V is AH, A, H, G, equate that to zero. But we know that A is the same. So you can actually cancel it out. Okay, so what we will have is P2 equals, I don't know, P2 minus P1 minus rho HG equal to zero. Or, if we're going to move all the two terms to the right, they will become positive. So P2 is just equal to P1 plus rho HG. Okay, and this is now our equation or pressure at depth. Okay, so this is your equation 
or pressure at depth. Okay? So, it means that as you go down, as the H is uh, higher or as you go deeper, the pressure will increase. Atmospheric pressure, P1, plus rho, which is density, a constant, times G, also another constant. So the only thing that changes here are your height. Okay? So as you go down the ocean, the pressure gets stronger and stronger because you have plus rho Hg. Okay? So we are now, we are here under the ocean. So this is under the water. <laughs> okay? So what if, sometimes you experience this when you're in, in flight, you're flying, zoom, airplane is going up something like this oops so this is our airplane you know you've noticed that your ears is a little bit popping I don't know outward perhaps because the pressure is also changing so in that case at higher altitude you have P1 P2 the pressure at higher altitude is is it lower or higher? What do you think? So I use here P1 and P2. So the equation still applies, but uh, your P1 will be the, the, high, the, uh, the upper part. So it becomes lower. It becomes minus, minus the height, the rho Hg. Okay, so your, your P1 here is equal to P2, um, minus rho hg so in a way it is decreasing as you go as you climb up the, the sky if you're if you are in a in an airplane and sometimes if you high you, you experience that pressure there is lower okay so uh, let me now show you some simulation using FET I have here and you can also visit this I have here some FET simulation which is available for free online. So the atmospheric pressure is about yeah 101.3 something kilopascal. If I increase the water level, as you can see, the water increases as the water level increases. So if you're swimming down here, oh the pressure is high, but if you're going to climb up, choo -choo 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 -choo, the pressure is low, and then. Outside should be atmospheric pressure, 101.3 one, times 101.3 kilopascal. Okay, so let's stop this recording and then continue with our next topic. Okay, see you in the next video.